Hi, I'm Diane Coleman. This short video is about Australia's trade relationships. Australia is the world's 13th largest economy with a GDP per capita over $55,000 a year. This makes Australia one of the richest countries on earth, although it might not feel like that for many of us. In 2018, Australia's economy continued its long run by notching up its 27th year of continuous economic growth. About a quarter of this comes from international trade, and about one-fifth of all jobs are trade-related. So it is important that we have an understanding of Australia's global trading relationships. Let's take a look at that now. Australia's overall two-way trade was over $662 billion in 2018. This is made up of imports valued at $317 billion and $345 billion worth of exports. This means that the balance of trade is slightly in Australia's favour as we sell more than we buy, giving us a trade surplus of $28 billion. Our top five trading partners are... China, with a whopping $193 billion worth of two-way trade. Then Japan, with a creditable $79 billion. The US, with $46 billion. South Korea, with $38 billion. And India, with $22 billion. As you can see by the pie chart, trade with China makes up nearly one-third of all of Australia's trade, with 29.2%. This means that China is by far Australia's most important trading partner. The availability of a whole range of low-priced goods produced in China, flat-screen TVs, mobile phones, clothing, shoes, furniture, have become vital to the very high stand living standards enjoyed by the majority of Australians. 34.3% of all export earnings come from shipping stuff to China. So... What goods is Australia trading with China and indeed with the rest of the world? Let's start with exports. What does Australia sell to the rest of the world? In 2018, coal became Australia's highest value export, accounting for 19% of total export earnings. This makes Australia the world's largest coal exporter. Iron ore, previously the major export for many years, came in a close second with $63 billion worth, again the largest exporter globally. China alone accounted for $51 billion of that. Then we have LNG, which, when combined with coal, makes Australia one of the biggest energy exporters in the world. We are number four worldwide for LNG. We are also the largest exporter of aluminium ore and beef. In the middle of this, at number four on the hit list is education services. You will be interested to know that Australia actually has the world's third largest international student sector, bringing in $35 billion a year. Tourism is big too at number five, bringing in $35 billion. Throw in a bit of gold, aluminium, petroleum and copper, and you can see that Australia is one of the largest producers of minerals in the world. So that's what we are selling to the rest of the world. Let's now see what we are buying. If we we're going on us personally, of course, we'd expect to see a whole bunch of household goods on there. Pretty much everything we buy in the shops these days comes from China or somewhere else in the Asia Pacific, but it's the big ticket items that really add up. Australians love to travel, especially since many of us have relatives in other parts of the world. And so it turns out that our biggest import spend is on travel and tourism. That's Australians paying to travel overseas. That's followed by cars and petrol to drive them, plus telecommunications equipment, mobile phones and the cables for the NBN and all that, and some crude petroleum, the kind we don't produce ourselves since we export this as well. As mentioned earlier, Australia has a good balance of trade, with the scales tipping in our favour. This hasn't always been the case. It has, it has taken a lot of work over many decades to open new opportunities to improve Australia's competitive position in terms of global trade. 
While Australia has participated in international negotiations at the many rounds of the World Trade Organization, it has also negotiated a number of free trade agreements with bilateral trade partners. As you can see, all of these partners are in the Asia-Pacific region, testament to the fact that two-thirds of Australia's trade is with regional partners. According to DFAT, Australia's FTAs aim to open up new markets by reducing tariffs, that is import taxes, and other trade barriers for Australian exporters, set rules to enhance trade and investment, and reduce risks associated with doing business overseas. Since it signed its first free trade agreement with New Zealand in 1983, Australia has entered into FTAs with 11 countries or groups of countries, including those listed here, as well as the CPTPP, the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, the CPTPP, is a free trade agreement, FTA, between Australia, Brunei, Canada, Chile, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, Peru, New Zealand, Singapore and Vietnam signed in 2018. The CPTPP will eliminate more than 98% of tariffs in the free trade area. Australia is also able to support our trade and investment interests through the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum, APEC, which Australia founded under Bob Hawke in 1989. APEC is the premier economic forum in the Asia-Pacific region with an agenda focusing on trade and investment, liberalisation, business facilitation and economic and technical cooperation. Well, that's Australia's trade with the world in a nutshell. You can find out more on the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trades website. Thanks for watching.